lowered. So when we look at change management, that's what's at stake. We're actually literally talking about the future of Drupal and the acceptance of it by major clients that want to bring this forward. And that's something that has not been really paid a lot of attention to. So this, this conversation that you're, you're raising here is really a very key point in terms of how this platform is going to be brought forth into the world outside of the Drupal network community in particular, which is where Drupal's beginning to go. So um, I've got to refer back to my hand, just doing that. <laughs> Um, so we've looked at uh, test-driven development from a top level. We've looked at continuous integration. Um, we've I've explained it basically. Uh, build systems are a state machine. Uh, what are the things that need to happen from a top level without getting into too much specifics? First, when you do a module, the module needs to be self-contained. This is because you are now following isolation, compartmentalization, and identity foundation, a keystone of your development practice. That means I've got to have all my CRUD for updates, that's, that's basically all your SQL and all the other bits, post-configuration, pre-configuration, for doing module maintenance and up updates, built into the module, so that if I do an update, the module can kind of just be like, all right, I'm taking care of myself. I'm now in a new environment. Maybe it's not exactly what I was expecting, but I can kind of handle that. I've now got my sort of exception handling built in. This is going to be a big shift for Drupal, because a lot of the modules that are coming in are built to a particular specification platform, and they need to be flexible. They need to, they need to be self-contained. This is this is this is definitely. What are some of the other bits? Go ahead. Um, is, is there like this kind of uh, focus and mentality for Drupal six, or yes. is it something later? Yeah, we talked a lot with a lot of the core guys about this, but I think that it needs to be more of a focus and more of a mentality, and it needs to be something that's out in the open, and it's definitely definitely worth evangelizing this kind of stuff because I think that it's re it, a lot of the core guys in Drupal know it. A lot of the senior developers do. And that's great because they write a lot of the code. Are they advocating it? I've seen it advocated. Um, now it needs to be evangelized. It needs to be, evangelized. It needs to be capital A of that advocated, not yeah. the small A. <laughs> yeah, Seriously. Exactly. Yes. Actually, I think the, 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 the capital A would be like, that sign is an email been talked about, which it's not really. There's some discussion, and there's a lot of people that are coming out and being like, holy crap, that's just cool. And for Google Summer of Code Project, it has a, a really far reaching impact, definitely one of more effective Summer of Code Project. Um, and actually completed it and done. I was very impressed by it. So, um, you know, Fing. Let's talk about Fing. Anybody know what Apache Ant is? You can raise your hand. Oh, what is it? What is it? Oh, uh, shit. I remember because of, uh, everybody's using AntPat to uh, compile and build requests. That's exactly right. That's, a, that's actually a perfect example of leading what I want to talk about. Apache Ant is a build management glue, right? It's, a, it's an incredibly useful tool for Java. It's kind of useless for the people in this room, right? Maybe, <laughs> maybe a few guys, right? But here's the thing. Thing is an attempt to bring that tool to Drupal, which is why it has this really strange it's nomenclature because there's a bunch of open source guys involved. We don't know what the hell they're talking about most of the time. But I think I got it. Uh, something, it's not new. I'm going to meditate on that one. So here's the thing, right? You start getting into this. Thing, basically, how do you hold this system together? I'll get into some of the things we've been looking at around 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 social build management next. But how do you hold the system together? So if I have you know a deployment layer where I'm going from from dev to staging to live, right? The most simple simple setup, as we talked about in the meeting yesterday. I, I think some of the folks in this room might recognize some of the faces. How do I move from dev to staging to live? How, how do I trigger that? And then how do I maintain that system over time? I need the tools, and that's where Fing comes in. I mean, basically, it's called shell glue. And shell glue allows you to reach in and build this stuff. Like one of the things we looked at with autopilot. Autopilot is effectively a Drupal multi-site install. I'm totally evangelizing my platform, which I haven't been doing. So here we go. Ready? It's a Drupal multi-site platform. Beginning gratuitous plug. Thank you. <laughs> Warning. Insert, we've been working our ass up here. Um, imagine a platform where uh, you could log into a Drupal site and say, I need uh, to build staging. Boom. Done. And it actually would grab the database in the web server based on preferences and roll it up. I mean, it's not command line, doesn't require a, 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 and then basically, you know, you've got other weird issues that come in. Anybody heard of Sabi and Well, I have a question. Yeah, that. bring it. Um, the, uh, the shell glue that you're calling it, right? Yeah. Simple administration and stuff. Um, I mean, do you, do you see that requiring like a CDS or SVN? Um, or is there something on the cheat that can be done even just by clicking copy? You know, there are, I think that there's going to emerge to be two or three best practices about this, which is why I think it's needed after this so damn there are completely different requirements. There are completely different requirements for running a multi-server install, for example, than running a single-server install. 
where I can get by with like TP, you know, where I have to use, in, if I'm using like a multi-site install and I need to, no, I have to embed, let's see. TP, you mean cPanel, WebS Manager? No, I mean copy. Copy. Yeah. Um, Sorry. No, it's okay. Um, you know, DOS will be COPY. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> get to the point. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so when you get into this thing and you start diving into uh, so into the complexity of it, like if you have a multi-server install, like with Autopilot, one of the most difficult things we had to figure out was how to embed SSH certificates inside of Apache, which is an unprivileged user in, in Unix. Very, very tricky. But it has to go Apache itself running through a web browser to be able to reach out and touch other services clearly. That's a pain in the ass problem. It really is. But it's, it's something that, you know, you have to kind of fix if you want to run it from a web browser or trigger it from the command line and have all the underlying it. So, so if you look at, um, like, I was, okay, so who served Starbucks, honestly? Let me get back on track. Anybody? Okay, Starbucks. Yeah, surprise. I heard. There's a disconnect between the Google community and public America. This is definitely something you should know about. You have to write it down, go home, read up on it. Starbox is a term that is driving one in ten IT dollars. Starbox is actually S A R B A I N S. That's S A R B A N E S. S A R B A N E S. Yeah, you're right. Actually, um, Starbox actually. Uh, Starbox actually is uh, is this really far-reaching, insane law that covers basically uh, you know keeping corporations honest. Compliance that? And policy. Yeah. Full disclosure. Full disclosure. One of the requirements of Sarbanes-Oxley for corporations is that the person that pushes the website live is actually different from those that are actually doing initial development. There's an approver from the business side. Why is that the case? It turns out that basically, if your developer pushes the staging, you know, business owners involved and they push it live, they could be pushing content that could basically kill the whole company. So Sarbanes-Oxley has uh, some very important implications on Google Build Management. Would you believe it? There you go, Sorry, Act. Um, it's, 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 a, it's evil corporation protection, okay? But it's highly ineffective <coughs> legislation. It has a very, very, very intense implication here, which is in order to make a system that can be used by large corporates, that even can be used, you have to enforce a rule that says that the same person doesn't have rights to build to production that they have the right to move from dev to QA or staging. That's a big problem, right? Because most systems, for example, DAS doesn't actually have any provisions for that kind of access management. And it turns out, you know, we're starting to get into some of the layers of complexity that come up as soon as you dig into this stuff. Um, so that, for example, would be one of the reasons that we need to move to a Drupal-based access role. Right? We got I mean, we're Drupal guys, right? But let's is use this Drupal. a big issue? I mean, do, do people yeah. know about this issue out there? Yeah. I mean, yeah. on the forefront. It's, it's a, this is what's holding us back from going to yeah. corporate. If you if you about. you do due diligence with really large contracts, you'll you'll start finding. I know you, you've been running some. You I've been hearing about it a lot. Um, uh, most of the CEOs aren't worried about it, but most of the technical guys know. So yeah, people um, actually read that URL. Uh, and you <laughs> like some screen. Yeah. Well, people actually read that shit. They actually see that there, there's kind of going to be stuff legally binding them from actually finishing off the project in a sense. Right. The, yes, the guys that do the due diligence on contracts are going to be like, what about these 86 things? A lot of times it comes up at the end of the contract and bites you in the ass. Let's talk about one of the other key things that, uh, that, that basically comes up. Uh, what about multi tier deployment? We talk about the build management. How do we actually come up with our best practice? And we had a little bit of a discussion about it the other day. Uh, I won't get too much into it, but multi-tier deployment turns out to be one of the things that build management systems do really well. You have to have a system that can basically push a physical system based on a variety of business requirements. It can be as esoteric as staging living on live, which I highly don't recommend, but it happens all the time. Dev, dev and staging being the same box where you're pushing actually. Yeah, thanks, Ethan. That's right. <laughs> we should fix that soon. <laughs> um, <laughs> No comment. <laughs> That's painful. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, you know, basically getting in there and and building a best practice. So one of the things, one of the key points that everyone in this room should really walk away with is what are the best practices around this problem? How do we explain to people a policy that guides development? Uh, just so people know, not so we can control it. I mean, Drupal roadmaps work 